And working with them was amazing. We did this movie very quickly. We did the entire movie in 13 and a half days. And so they had to have pages and pages of dialogue memorized every single day. And they both always showed up ready to play, ready to work. Um, and their dynamic was really fun to watch. Can you tell us what Classmates is about in your own words and why we should look forward to it? Yes, Classmates is about friendship and self-discovery and it's a uh, very fun and um yeah, I really wanted to do this project because, well, for one thing, I got to work with incredible female actors and I was just very excited about um, women-led projects. And so that was one of the main things that drew me to it. Great. Now, this was a joint project with your husband, Jensen Karp, mm -hmm. um, who wrote the film while you directed. Um, who initially came up with the idea? It was something, it was a conversation between Jensen and I. Jensen always has really great ideas. And uh, so originally, I think the original concept was his. And then we just talked it out a lot. And he then ended up writing the script. Uh, and of course, it went through a million different changes. You come up with an original concept and you start putting it down on paper. And then and then you find a great partner like Tubi. And then you send it to them and they have notes. And so from where it was when we started to where it was when we ended, it went through you know million different iterations. But Jensen was the, the primary idea guy. Okay. And what was it like to work with the young stars of Classmates, Angelica Bethelini and Kaden Muller Jansen, um, as someone who's had a lot of experience as an actress? It was absolutely phenomenal. I had already worked with Caden on the show she's on called Villains of Valley View. I was fortunate enough to direct uh, multiple episodes in, in their first season and now again in their second season. And so I was very familiar with Caden. I absolutely loved her. I actually really pushed for her to get the role in this movie because I knew that she was perfect for it. And Angelica was just amazing. I had one meeting with her. I felt like she really understood the character. She right away wanted to to talk to me about what kind of hair, what kind of haircut do you think this, this character has? And what do you think her style is? And she just, she got it. And working with them was amazing. We did this movie very quickly. We did the entire movie in 13 and a half days. And so they had to have pages and pages of dialogue memorized every single day. And they both always showed up ready to play, ready to work. Um, and their dynamic was really fun to watch. And did you have any guidance or any mentoring from anyone going into this major project or were you just kind of going at it solo and on your own? I thankfully had Ryder Strong, who was with me on Boy Meets World. He has directed multiple feature films before, and I trust him implicitly and knew he really knew what he was doing. And I felt very out of my element because while I have had a very, um, I've had a very fortunate career directing multi-camera sitcoms, I had never directed a single camera project before. And so I felt very over my head and I felt like, oh my gosh, what if I fumble this? You know, I, I like to, I like to be good at the things that I do. And I was worried I wasn't going to be good at it. And so writer thankfully took some time and sat down with me and walked me through things and looked over my shot list with me. Um, and then I also had an amazing DP on this project who, um, Christopher Ghosh, I absolutely adored him. And he really helped me come up with the, the, shot list and what we wanted to see from it and come up with some fun original ideas. And, and so I had both of them. That's great. Um, last year, you received an Emmy nomination for directing an episode of Raven's Home. Um, with that early success and now your work with Tubi and all the other directing that you've been doing, is this, what is your long-term goal that you would like to pursue in the future as far as directing? Is it a feature film? Is it um, do you have anything that you would like to, to kind of reach in the future as far as just being a director? Yeah. I mean, I'm so lucky that like so many of my dreams are still really coming true in this world of directing. Like I just got to direct my first network television show. I got to direct for NBC on Lopez versus Lopez. And up until that point, I had only directed Disney, cam uh, Disney channel multicams. And I love the multi-camera world. It's what I grew up doing. It feels very comfortable for me. Um, I love working with actors in that medium. With that said, there aren't that many multicams out there. So I am absolutely open to the idea of doing another feature, but multicams is really where I just 
absolutely thrive. So I'd like to do more of those. And, and uh, you know, whether that's for Disney Channel, who's always been an amazing partner with me or uh, moving into the network side, I'm, I'm just happy to keep working. And is there any chance that you will return to acting in the future? Man, it, you know what? That's a good question. I think I would. It would have to be, it would have to be the right project. There's a couple of things I would love to do. Um, one, I loved being a mom on a multi-camera sitcom. It was great. Girl Meets World playing Topanga as a mother was a real highlight for me as far as I just loved it. I, I'm very maternal. I love, um, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's funny and it's warm and you get to be this, uh, just, I don't know, a character that I feel comfortable in. And then of course, if there were some, some amazing character job that I got to do, I would be open to it too. But really, I feel like I'm really thriving in the second stage of my career as a director. All right. And we uh, talked about uh, directing now to kind of pivot to Boy Meets World, you and the rest of the cast will be reuniting at 90s Con to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the sitcom. How did that come about? And are there any surprises for the convention? I don't know all of the details that have been released yet. So there may still be some surprises. Mm -hmm. Uh, We did, a few of us did, Matt Lawrence, Ryder Strong, Wilfred L, Trina McGee, and myself did 90s Con last year in, or in, um, in Connecticut, in Hartford. And we had a great time there. It was so much fun. And then when this year came around, uh, we weren't able to do Hartford this year, but they told us they were doing Tampa and that was a little bit of a secret. And what they told us was they wanted to make this the largest Boy Meets World reunion yet. So I don't know everybody who's been announced, but I do know we like Lee Norris is joining us. Uh, so uh, yes, there may still be some surprises, but it's going to be it's going to be incredible. Betsy and Rusty, who played Amy and Alan Matthews, are going to be there. So I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a truly incredible weekend to have all of us together again. That's great. Um, how do you feel about the legacy of Topanga as a character and how she has just continued to be a role model for girls who grew up watching the show and are watching the show even now? I feel so lucky to have been the person uh, who got cast as as Topanga because I have never wanted to, you know, talk badly about a different, any other shows, but I think there were so many shows where you could be really known for a character and then not have it really make you feel good because the character maybe wasn't a good character or maybe they were a villain or any of those things. And so then people see you and they get like a negative feeling about you. And I had the polar opposite, like people think of Topanga and they think of, you know, they think she, you know, she was smart and she was driven and she had, she had a great relationship and she had friendships and I think I'm so lucky that when people see me, they think of that. Uh, so I, I'm I'm very fortunate. Great. Um, I also wanted to ask you about your um, clean hair care line at QVC, um, Be Free. Can we expect more products from you along those lines um, other than hair care? Are you going to look to expand Be Free? Possibly, yeah, I, into think, other I think we'll get into. We have a couple of face products just because they. Again, this company started be out of out of real necessity for me. I wanted I wanted cleaner hair care, and the stuff that was out there that I tried, I just didn't love. And so I created something that I loved, and thankfully, other people love it too. Um, and then with that, I wanted a clean face wash because the clean face washes that were out there, I again didn't love. So I created a face wash, and then I use oil on my face. I wanted an oil, so we created an oil. So as the line continues to expand, it's really coming from a place of like, what are the things I am using on a daily basis that I want to see our company um, produce? And so, yes, there are going to be a lot more products. I'm really excited about the partnership with QVC. We launched in January there. Um, of, you know, Previously to that, we had just been direct to consumer through our website. But QVC has been a great partner, and we have a lot of plans there throughout the rest of this year and moving into the years beyond for how we're going to expand and the ways we're going to grow that partnership. Okay. And going back to the directing. Um, just because I have more uh, questions about that. Um, What for you is the hardest part about being a director? And how is that compared to, especially the multicam, how is that compared to being an actor in that situation? Yeah, um, I think the hardest part actually ties into the acting side is that I so 
I so relate to the actors and I know exactly what they're feeling. And I know some of the struggles of being an actor on whether it's a film or a multicam where, you know, somebody has something in their mind, a writer or an executive has something in their mind the way that they want it. And they want the actor to give them that, but then it takes away some of the actor's agency. Some of the, the actors thinking of like, but I want to say it this way. I, I think this is funniest, or I think this is smartest, or I think this is unique and different enough. And you want to give them the opportunity to do that, but you also have to make your executive happy or the writer happy. And as the director, you're a little bit in between the two of them. You need to make this person happy, but as me, I so can relate to what the actor is going through. Um, and so it, it, the hardest part is probably trying to find the happy medium between never wanting to take away the agency of the actor, but also making sure your, your bosses and your writers are also happy with the performances that you're getting. But that's also the most fun part, like that collaboration and that building of a character and the building of the deliveries is what makes it so fulfilling to me. It's like you see the product on day one and then you see the product at the end and you're like, wow, we did that. Like we did that. That's great. Great. Um, also, um, going back to you talking about there not being as many multicam shows on the air, why do you think that is? Do you think that there's a possibility that we could see like a resurgence and and that you know the, the that kind of traditional sitcom coming back? I know that we still have some of them on network television, but um, do you have any insight into you know why they've they've kind of you know, petered out a bit. Yeah. I mean, I think people have gotten so used to the, the, everything now is, is, is shot in a single camera way and it make, it feels more real. Uh, the multi-camera performing, feeling like you're on a stage and you're being, you're, it's like performing in theater is just starting to become a little outdated, um, which is unfortunate because I think it's very comforting. And honestly, if there isn't going to be a resurgence of multicams, there should be. I think there is an appetite for it now, maybe more than ever. And I think the multicams that are that are out there are really succeeding right now. And that should be a sign to, to people and to networks that, you know, people want more of this. Uh, it feels good. It feels comforting. And even if you think you want the, the drama and the intensity and the feeling like you're right there with the single cam, for a lot of people, what we're looking for when we turn to television is an escape because so much of what is actually going on in the world is also so heavy that when you go to TV, you're going to it for a sense of comfort and to laugh and to maybe shut your brain off for a little bit. And Multicam gives you that ability more than anything else. Okay. And what is what do you have coming up next? I know you're talking about Lopez versus Lopez. Um, what other projects do you have coming up that you would like people to know about? Well, like I mentioned, I've been directing for season two of Villains of Valley View, which is just one of my favorite places to be. Such a wonderful group of people. And I got I get to reunite with Kate and every time I'm there. So that always makes me happy. Uh, and then I have directed for uh, the first season of another Disney Channel show called Pretty Freakin' Scary. And that show premieres this summer. And I'm really excited for people to see that project as well. And then obviously, we've got the premiere of Classmates, which I'm super excited about. So those are the big things. And then more QVC stuff for, for Be Free. I'm going to be back there in May. So that's right around the corner. All right. Well, Danielle, that is all the questions I have for you today, but thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. <laughs>